sometimes the silence is just uncomfortable because like like i'm able to do two things at once i'm able to kind of you know just uh have the podcast in on the background while i'm doing something or uh some sports talk but like because that's going on like the lord can't talk to me you know what i mean like the lord can't uh break through my work or even more so like my heart just can't be lifted up to like what he desires to say to me in that moment and I'd be naive to think that he doesn't want to speak to me in that moment. He doesn't want to talk to me in that moment. He he does. And maybe he's shouting, like, just turn off the stupid lo-fi <laughs> so I could talk to you. And um, and it's just tough though, at the same time, we're in the sense of like, uh, I don't like the quiet. And like, what is that? It's a question for myself. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. hey I'm Father Mark Mary. Hey, I'm Father PT. Hey, hey what's up, everybody? Father Innocent here. Hey, everyone. Father Angelus here. This Ready is, to go. This is the Poco Poco podcast, also known as Las Sillas Primeras, <laughs> the first chairs. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all, we're all, again, we're all just, we're all chair number one here. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. 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 Right. Um, we were just, t- last episode, we were talking about ways in which you can sort of put humility in practice. We just had a great one. You know, it's like one guy wants to eat some cranberries and nuts while we're doing the podcast. And it's like, for me to doubt on myself and be like, you know, what, even though that's my least favorite thing in the entire world, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to let you over, do it. Bro. I'll have some with you. happy. <laughs> Or the other guy would be like, no, okay, I know he doesn't like it, so I'm not going to do it. These, these are types of things that we're talking about. Right? Real this life is kind of, things, this is real life bro, stuff. Real life things. This is real life stuff. Do you want us to tell, tell do you want to talk about your energy, energy, energy I'm trying drink? The, I'm trying the, the I energy talk. drink. I don't really have anything to say about it, but I'm going to drink it. You're number four, because like, we, all, we all had one. But yeah, see, this is not my fourth. I, I, yeah, but you're I, number four. I, I did not true. drink coffee last episode because I was gonna have this. I uh, I'm crashing. <laughs> bro, there was you energy can't crash in like a half hour, bro. There was high energy at the beginning of the episode. Last episode I was quieter just because I had to go to the bathroom really bad. <laughs> it was like I'm not gonna prolong the situation any longer, and so. That's Thanks it. for sharing that. Just want to let everybody know that. <laughs> well, you just need to have another energy drink. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's that what you're supposed to do, bro. You're supposed to keep when slamming start, them. <laughs> <laughs> when you start to crash, you're just supposed to do another one. <laughs> All right. That's the spirit. Don't my, <laughs> if you would have taken a drink, I don't right, care about you, that. I don't, care. You don't care. Really? No, I don't care. I thought it was sweet. Interesting. You don't care about that. I don't care about that. But you care if I were to have. If you were to be chewing those chewing things right in now, my yeah. ear, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, not, I would not love that. See, I would mind more somebody taking a sip of my own drink because that's not. I mean, anyway. I do not care about that. Okay. You'll have different preferences. <laughs> Here's a fun question for the listener, especially if you're new here. We're going to, we, we'll pick up about 10 minutes into the episode of the serious stuff. <laughs> Here's my fun Just question. Sure you know. what, what is something that you like more than at least 99% of the rest of the population? So the idea is this. The idea is there's, it's, I've done both food and activity. Something that you like, basically, I, ideally, done. It's like you like it way more than anybody else you've ever met. Like you've never really met somebody who likes something as much as you. A couple of good examples that have come yeah, up help me around the dinner table that are actually fun ones. Uh, one of the brothers has a, a profound love of fully functioning spray bottles. <laughs> so he was helping out at the uh, general chapter and they had a great spray bottle. And in He was a, loving it. In a, like a couple of days, he went through the whole bottle, just spraying stuff, wiping it down. That was a very, that was like that I was think a good I know one. who that is. That's a great example. That's a good I, example. I, I appreciate that. one other brother, which it's probably more com- it seems to be it was more common than he thought. Loves putting together like old bars of soap, like gluing them together with new ones. No, absolutely not. <laughs> to that's make so weird. This makes me really uncomfortable. Well, when it came up, a lot of other people liked it because that's what something that happened. Like you're, you know, yeah. Anyway, it's so weird. Apparently, it's a very because you can really like you can really form it and really kind of get it to be kind of glued together that's one of the things he loves to do weird. it's not me it's it is just, weird <laughs> do you guys you guys got anything that come to mind i have a food thing okay like i love i don't know if it's disordinate but like i just really talk I mean, about it no no no. i mean yes we're talking about it right now chicken fingers and french fries 
Like, I it's really, true. I could see that. I right? really love that. Like, so in college, uh, especially, yeah, there was always an option to have chicken fingers and french fries, and I always opted for that option. It was no longer an option. It was a it was a choice, and it was a preferential choice. Um, I could honestly have it, like the deserted island question, if you could have one meal for the rest of your life on chicken a deserted island, french chicken fries. fingers, french fries. So in college, you had them every day? Almost, yeah. And uh, without any decrease in enjoyment? No. Like, yeah. I mean, I've, I don't want to say it's the most... Like the thing I've eaten the most because there's obviously home cooked food, but I really, really like chicken fingers and French fries. Is there a place that you would prefer? Like if you someone could take you somewhere and get them, is there like a restaurant that's like, yeah, this is the best? Restaurant, no, but like typically diners, um, good ones, like the greasy spoon diners type of thing, where yeah, the fries are greasy, the chicken fingers aren't too soggy, but like they're crunchy, honey mustard. Oh, oh man, it's just French. No ranch. No, 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 no. We don't do ranch around here. <laughs> at, least it's Midwest, it's Midwest yeah. <laughs> at least it's a barbecue sauce or honey mustard. Most of the time it's honey mustard. It comes in diners in particular. And so mm. that's, I mean, I, I could, anyway. You guys got anything that's coming to mind? You want me to? I have something it? that's coming to mind, but it's going to be predictable. But I, I just can't explain how much I like it. Like, <laughs> like humanly? Yeah. Getting up early. Like I, I, I like, I just like it. I like how I feel. In the morning at four fifteen. Four fifteen. But that's a good example. That's PM? a great example. Where it's just like I can't explain it because it's not like I like how I feel when I walk down and get a cup of coffee and I sit down. It's like four thirty. No one else is around. I'm just in our refectory with Jesus. Like I like it. And if I go to bed late, I'll still do it because I like it. I, I, I th- and I think that's weird. It's like one of those things. Like oh, you like yeah. that a lot com- compared to most people. That's a good one. I don't know if I have a good one. Does anybody have any ideas knowing me? I just can't. I can't think of something right now. There's got to be some. I mean, you like ranch. <laughs> I do like ranch, but more than others, probably not. I like ranch a lot. I, I, I like wine. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? What's your mailing address again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I like bottles of wine. That's how helpful. Ranch. ranch. Scarf. And wine. Scarf. That's ridiculous. Anyway, we don't. We can move on. I wish I had something creative. I wish I was for an activity, mm-hmm. activity or food, either one. Activity or food. Yeah. Can it be the other way too that you like are surprised how much you don't like it? Like, <laughs> sure. sand, like sand. Oh, that's yeah. a good example. Definitely. You, you don't like to be dirty. I, you don't like sand. Yeah, I don't like more than uh, more than most people. I don't know. I have met someone that matches me on my desire to be clean and not liking sand. So we can put that in the affirmative. You really like to be clean. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Abnormally so. Well, one of the postures was one of the postulates yesterday, looking at the brothers, you're like, why is everybody else's a habit a mess but yours? <laughs> one of the who postulates, one of the postulates. Like looking at all you all. Like, why is everybody else's habit a mess but yours? What does he mean by a mess? <laughs> like this. <laughs> okay. Because I think I'm hap- I'm okay with it being dirty and whatever. But as long I, I don't want it to be like like you know this is a mess for no me. no that's this. not what he meant that's because okay. it's patched and it's this and it's that and when you I, my habit's pretty creased <laughs> <laughs> and clean have you ever had another habit besides the two that you have yeah one. Oh, okay yeah, yeah. but i'm i I'm much my rather where i had i have one little patch on this mm-hmm. one but I, I don't really live in a way as if my habit needs to be patched i don't know what that means <laughs> anyway i like to be clean there did you have another one over there i really you've like, been thinking i really like naps like I love taking naps. I don't know how this like once again maybe compared to others, yeah. But like, if I could take a, a solid half an hour to an hour nap every day, oh my gosh! <laughs> and maybe like this is like the the whole sleep thing. Like I just really like sleeping. You need to grow up. <laughs> I do. Chicken fingers and sleeping. How old am I? Five, right? But uh, <laughs> relatable. Like about Max, we yeah. talked about Max on his throne, bro. <laughs> right. That's why everybody likes you. You're the yeah. relatable one. But like, it's just it's just really anyway. No one really getting up early. <laughs> 4, 15, 4 15 boy over here. It's like, okay. But yeah, I just really, really, really like naps. Because there's nothing, I mean, anyway, for me, it's just after mass, like, you know, just a little bit of a, you get a little bit of a window. Yeah, you would take one after mass? But, hey. In the morning. Hey. Like 8.30 a.m. I'm being vulnerable. No. 8.30 a.m. It's a prayer day, dude. It's a prayer day. He's got the rest of the day. Or no, like, I don't okay. think he's relax. talking about a prayer. <laughs> okay. Regular relax. day. I know in the evening I have teens or I have something sure. going on that's going to be later. Take a little space. Yeah. Take a little nap. I'm, I'm free. I could at take a nap. 8.30 in the morning. 8.30 in the and morning. And you got up at 5.58 for office. Whoa. 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 Maybe 5.50. No. <laughs> but definitely I could easily go back to sleep and just like that, that post mass naps resets me. 
I just, I really like naps. I could take a nap at any point in the day, any point in the day and be okay with it. <laughs> like morally, physically, emotionally. I'm not judging you. I just don't. <laughs> it's just your, that, don't everything in you seems to say that, you're judging. That, whoa, <laughs> after mass felt like judgment. It wasn't, it was just surprising because mm -hmm. I can't, it just, again, I can't, I can't do it. Oh. I, uh, it's not going to do it. <laughs> I like charcuterie board. What can I say? You know what I mean? Just kidding. It was, I like, I got one for you. What? The Croix or seltzer water. There you go. Well, I do probably. That's but disproportionate. A yeah. But a lot of people. Whoa. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> this just got, everyone gets to choose their own. <laughs> just got a little accusatory. I'm, I'm giving you yours. There's a little crosstalk going uh -huh. on here. Um, A couple of ones for me, just really quickly. As I do, it's not a, a fun one. I've never met anyone who actually likes bowling as much as me. <laughs> That's a true thing. You're anyone who is just like. I think we should propose that you're throwed out there again that you, in high school, you generally went by yourself. It wasn't in high school, it was in early college, but. <laughs> but you went by yourself. Yes. I think there's some questions around that. <laughs> yeah, two bowling balls, your own shoes, gloves. I mean, it's a wrist brace, but yeah, powder, <laughs> the whole thing. But I still, to this day, the idea of having space in a bowling alley with actual, like it has to be a good bowling alley with good bowling balls just to be there. It was something that I enjoy at an extremely high level. Flourish extremely high level and i've never met i'm there's people out there like me i've just never met one um the other one i'm gonna like nuance it a little bit so it's not like i <laughs> this is a funny one i love gambling i love <laughs> big time bro <laughs> poverty boy like the, yeah. do you get like i love local every, serving, i love you, everything about gambling like you gamble I love, often i love everything about gambling in most forms mm -hmm. um <laughs> I have done zero gambling in the past five days, <laughs> probably 15 years. So it's not something I'm actively doing, mm -hmm. but like even like little things of like, like you're like with friends, like watching a football game and it doesn't have, it doesn't, it's not about like even money being online. It's like, I bet you, you know, whatever over under, he gets like the 20 yard line, like the, the kickoff return, little stuff like that. Oh, over under like whether or not, and it could just be a game where you just keep the score. You're not doing money. Like, yeah. like, over under like okay is it gonna be a pass or run it's oh. gonna be a run okay and then you get like a point if you get it right i could do that little type of stuff about anything always first person to get up to grab food at the, yeah, yeah. whatever we do that all i mean sometimes with like mass times like we were at the um the chrism mass for the yeah, yeah, yeah. and i was like over under like set the line at whatever like a, an hour and 45 minutes and I was like, over under. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll take the over on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. But yeah. there was no, there was no exchange of goods. There was right. no, you know. But I love betting on things. Mm -hmm. On everything and pretty much anything. And if you, if we were like, you're sitting next to me at a wedding and you wanted me to have a good time, just sit next to me and be like, hey, let's start, let's bet on some stuff. What are the chances of <laughs> them staying on the dance floor for more than three minutes? Mm -hmm. I would love that. Well, I'm sorry. We didn't keep our promise of getting to the episode in <laughs> could i just bring up another <laughs> yeah. instance with you um so uh, maybe people know the time where i went to the tanya nika zoo with you yeah. basically i think i love i don't know if it's disproportionate but i love like natural like things in nature or and, zoos okay yeah well well to say that we i had the experience of like petting a kangaroo of feeding a giraffe of like feeding a rhinoceros of riding on a camel and i was freaking out and i was like super excited you were not right do you remember when we were also in Nicaragua, or Nicaragua in uh, Guatemala? There was a, a volcano erupting, and I was like, "This is this is awesome." <laughs> and you're like, eh, "Eh, whatever." But then I was driving with you on the way to, to Hermitage, yeah. And we were passing; it was under construction at this point, the Tappanzee Bridge, and there was just like machinery in the river, and you started freaking out. I love bridges and making a bridges. <laughs> That's true. I think it's awesome. And I was like, interesting. We saw a volcano erupt. I was feeding a giraffe. <laughs> and like what turns, like what just gets you going, at least mentally, is just like the fact that you're on a bridge, yep. which is pretty common. Bridges are awesome. Okay. Bridges are awesome. Wow. So, okay. First of all, I had mm -hmm. already seen, I'd already been in Guatemala. I'd already seen the volcano erupt. And I'd already been on uh, whatever, safaris in Africa. Wow. So it's like, it wasn't, I love animals all and I love news, all that bro. stuff. Mm -hmm. I also think I love this. <laughs> Let's throw that in your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What are, we, what are we, 15 Sorry. minutes in? What is it? <laughs> that was a little. That was 15 minutes. Yeah. A strong 15 minutes, to be Sorry. honest. <laughs> Feel free to take that conversation back to your own friends and family. Um, the, 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 what do you like more? I think it's a good question. Uh, and feel free to gamble with me, but not for stuff. 
for just the kicks of competition. Okay. Well, that's a speaking of competition. We're going to talk about detachment. Excuse me. (laughs) And solitude, specifically solitude, right? So, so this is episode. This is our penultimate episode Mm. on um, Father Thomas Dubé. (laughs) What did you just say? I actually corrected a postulant the other day who said penultimate. I'm like, I threw a different religious order on the bus. I'm like, they say penultimate. We say second to last. (laughs) It's true. We say second to last. Come on, speak the language of normal people um so anyway so this is the second to last episode on uh the fire within by father thomas dubé and it's it's specifically gonna be about solitude solitude through in the book is one of the sort of conditions for for growth um it's very much related to detachment and there's a whole lot about detachment and i just um i think for john on the cross and for Teresa, like there's just a lot to detachment and maybe more than that we wanted to get into for these these episodes we've talked about it in the past and so we're kind of instead of just like a general conversation on detachment which is 100 percent like an integral part of a fire within an integral part of um the sort of approach to the kind of approach to the lord into the world um the the detachment's a big deal okay but i'm we're gonna look at like a a kind of a a specification of it which is um solitude and um just a real encouragement to to pursue and to find solitude, but also like a little bit of a um, an explanation that by solitude uh, for us, by for solitude in a fire within, it's not just um, quiet time in your room praying, but it's avoiding certain other sort of behaviors, worldviews, um, curiosities, distractions, which uh, distract us from. Uh, take us from our focus on the Lord and the primary things. And so I think a first is just, um, this is just kind of like a, a working definition of, of solitude. And um, Father Dubé calls it a healthy turning towards one's, be- one's beloved. And, and, and it's con- the context of him saying this is basically, it's not just, uh, he's speaking of, of, of solitude, kind of like the sort of being off by yourself with the Lord. Like, like solitude is not an authentic solitude and a healthy solitude and a, a sanctifying solitude is not just the running from people. It's not an isolation. It's not a hiding. Uh, it's not avoiding of, of our problems by going off and being by ourselves. but it's an authentic pursuit, uh, right? It's not running from it. It's running to and it's an authentic pursuit of, of the one we love, of our beloved, of the Lord, with a desire to be uh, in relationship with him, to be in prayer with him, um, to speak to him, and to allow him uh, to speak to us. And so I think that is my, my introductory comments on solitude. Great. So I think it, it, there's different ways to look at this solitude, right? And I, I think practically in our own hearts and maybe our minds, emotions, like I think it's about the orientation of our hearts right? Like the space we have, it's like, again, we're not running away from things for the sake of the Lord. And in some ways we are, but it's not like we're, we're, uh, again, an isolation or like a hiding or things because we're afraid of the world, but it is this, we just realize in our humanity, we're limited. And so guys, I only, only have so much time and energy in my, in, in my day. My, I, my, my affections are limited right? I, it's hard to love a hundred people. <laughs> and that's why like, I, like God gives me like a really core group, group of people to love. I'm limited. I can't, I can't just give my heart to thousands of people every day. Um, and so, so is with God, right? Like the, I think the be- the beautiful like posture or orientation of our hearts first and foremost is what we're talking about is that at the foundation of my life, am I fundamentally oriented and, and, um, living in right relationship and, and in union with God. And when I do that, everything else makes sense. But even if it's if it's subtle or even if it's not so subtle, sometimes there's a lot of things and a lot of noise and a lot of preoccupations, or sometimes in the gospels we call them other like storehouses that I like of treasure that I can can build up that are not God. And sometimes they're not bad, but we have to stop pretending that they don't have a, an effect on our lives. Right? Like if I give my time to technology. I'm going, it's going to affect my prayer, right? It pulls me out of this relationship of solitude, of oneness, of single heartedness to the Lord. And it pulls me out. And so I'm like, okay, so two hours on technology or, or worldly affairs. And and again, we'll talk about that because, you know, when you have, you have to do your job and you have to, 
and you have to attend to things for your family, that's not a bad thing, but we just have to be, we have to be focused and careful because they do have an effect, right? And so it has an effect on our, the oneness, singleness of heart, solitude with the Lord. So I think at the fundamental parts, we're talking about orientation. We're talking about like, you know, are my affections dispersed in a thousand different ways? Or do I have this, this like this, this beautiful movement of love and, and affection towards God in my daily life? Is it the singular one? Is there, is there power behind it? Or is God one of many things I give my affections to? Right. And God is calling us to know, like he wants to be a singular, he wants to be a singular person in your life or, or a, a place, right? He wants the first fruits. Um, and he's, he's worthy of that. And so we have to de be detached or sober about other things because it hasn't, I think it just has an effect. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, uh, it's, it's not just once again, just going off by myself. Like that's not solitude because you could be by yourself and away from the Lord, you know, and totally ignore him. Totally. Um, and so the thing is, once again, it's the movement of your, your heart and what am I focused on and what am I thinking about? Because we'll, we'll talk about it, but it's just one of those things where I could be with the Lord, focused on him, but like amidst my daily activity. Um, and like, I'm just in that place of intimacy with him while doing different things, you know, and, and obviously it doesn't happen overnight. It takes work. And this is part of once again, swimming in the deep end of as far as prayer, but it is something once again, where, um, like Jesus shows us this in the gospel where like he's amidst different activities and he goes away and Peter goes and looks for him. This is after the healing of Peter's mother. And, uh, he's like, master, everybody's looking for you, but he was off praying because he needed to talk to his father, just be with him and just to connect with him again. He says, come on, let's go. Let's go back to work. And in the sense of the place of solitude, the place of connectivity brings you back to the place of, of uh, generativity, of going out and doing more. But there has to be a place of connection and a point of connection. And that's just being with the Lord, even amidst different activities. But once again, um, it's more than just being by yourself uh, because it can't just be that, but it has to be like my heart's placed and seeking after the heart, the one who can move me into a place of, of totally being his. Um, and so it's just one of the, the movement in the sense of just how we're able to be the Lord's in that way. The only other two words that I would add um, would just be this sense of like, do do I, am I independent or dependent? And so this life of independence just leads me to kind of, again, kind of be more self-focused and, and more in control. And so I'm independent of the Lord often because I can't, maybe I could get ahead of him or I could be distracted by other things, but I'm, I'm, I'm more independent from him. And, and the, the gift of the gospel and the gift of discipleship is being dependent. Like uh, our friends at IPF would talk about the arena of dependence. What arena do I live in every day? One of being independent, doing my own thing, or one in being dependent, right? And so when we live in this solitude, we live in this radical dependence um, that doesn't disconnect us from what's important, you know, relationships and experiences and work and things we need to do, but we, we live differently because our heart is dependent on grace, dependent on the Lord. And, and we see experiences the, the fruit of being independent because that's where we get into trouble. That's where, that's where we get distracted and that's where we get anxious and that's where we get afraid and that's where we get opinionated. And that's where ego comes in because it is about us. It is about doing it on my own. Right. And so it's just good. Like it, it, again, another way to say the same thing, but just like what, what arena do we want to live in? Do I want to be the one who's dependent on the Lord? and dependent on this orientation to him? Or is it is it this part of my heart and my part of my life that constantly just is okay with just doing my thing and doing my own thing and, and being in control and and having that more of a spirit of independence without the Lord? I have this story recently with Brother Colby, and he'd probably kill me if I said this, but I think it just gives a great example that, and I this happens often actually, I try to visit Brother Colby in the tailor shop when he's usually there on Mondays, he's currently making all the posh and novice habits right now. So he's, so he's been, there every day. He's been there every day. And I have a sense when I walk up there that I'm interrupting brother Colby, not because he's making habits, but because he's praying. Mm -hmm. So every time I go up there and I just have this, I'm like, Oh, like, and so I say, sorry for interrupting. It's not because he has to stop sewing, mm -hmm. but he's like with the Lord. Mm -hmm. There's like a solitude happening. They're, they're communing. Right. And, and he's so beautiful because he always stops and he's like very happy. And I like invited into something and he usually has a word or he usually has something that he's been kind of like praying with. <laughs> it's like so beautiful. But I think this is what we're talking about. Like the tailor shop becomes a place of solitude for him. 
and uh, we we did a, a series on Brother Lawrence, right? Like Brother Lawrence said, like amidst the pots and pans, I think Teresa might have something sort of like that as well. Amidst the pots and pans, like I, I encounter and live in this intimacy with the Lord. But this is the, even like this solitude can happen anywhere, right? You could be on the streets, you could be in the kitchen, you could be in the tailor shop, obviously the chapel, my, my cell. Um, this solitude is actually available, you know, because we have, like PT said, Father PT said, it takes a lot of practice, but it becomes so beautiful because you begin to taste that you can have this place of being with the Lord kind of in the hermitage of your heart, as some of the saints say. Um, Brother Colby, Brother Colby is just a great example of that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> just to confirm that, because I think it's, um, <clears throat> I've had the, whatever the word is, it's almost like it's, it feels like a privilege thing, the sacred privilege of interrupting Brother Colby while he's in there tailoring, right? <laughs> and, and, and in some ways, like it can feel um, a little bit like ex- exaggerated or a little bit sort of sentimental in our, our language here. But you you do, you go up there and it's like, okay, something, um, I'm coming into something happening, right? And there's always, <laughs> exactly. again, like there's like a little prayer card or a little something, or there's like, if you and talk to him, there's a little word, but there's definitely a sense of like, right, uh, the making of the habit is secondary to what is also primarily happening. And I think this is, this is kind of a good transition into um, some of like what this looks like for the, uh, for the listener in the world. Right. And, you know, um, how many people, right. If they were going to be spending a couple hours uh or their full days, a couple of days out of the week, like making habits, how many would do it without some sort of um, background noise, right? How many would do it without the TV turned on or the radio turned on or um, sort of like listening to something, the podcast, whatever it is. And I think that that would be, a, this would be kind of what, what we're talking about is like, um, there's an opportunity given you're doing something and there's an opportunity to, to enter into the quiet and ultimately um, with practice enter into the relationship and to turn that solitary activity into a, into an opportunity of solitude uh, with the Lord, um, but it means like not filling the space with other things. And Brother Coley's been doing this and cultivating this disposition for you know nearly fifteen years in religious life, and so he's kind of had the habit the the habit of of doing this right, and and he really enters into it. And this is just again, I'm trying to like put my money where my mouth is with the, these episodes and in my own spiritual direction and talks. It's like this is one of the things if when I'm uh, going on long drives to Virginia and back when I'm sort of working out, when I'm going on runs is, um, when I'm flying wherever it's like, okay, often, like how often do we sort of, you're, you're going on a flight, you throw on the movie or you throw on some sort of thing to listen to and trying to it. Like, and I think this is a healthy thing for me. It's not, I'm not going to go from, all right. For the whole seven hour drive, I'm not going to listen to anything. I think Brother Colby might get to that point or where it's all like holy things, right? Like there's some, there's room for growing up, building up to it, but taking some space amidst some of your ongoing activities, work, driving, uh, running, exercising, et cetera, shopping, folding laundry, whatever it is, to cultivate a little bit of extra space and, and turning those activities into opportunities for solitude with the Lord is, I think, um, like a, a really accessible uh, and apical first step. Yeah. And it's, I mean, I'm just with you in the sense of like, I do office work or whatever it is. And I have like the lo-fi playing, you know, and I even make myself feel better by like a glory and chant lo-fi type of thing, (laughs) you know, and, um, and it's uncomfortable. Sometimes the silence is just uncomfortable because like, like I'm able to do two things at once. I'm able to kind of, you know, just uh, have the podcast in on the background while I'm doing something or uh, some sports talk, but, like, because that's going on, like the Lord can't talk to me. You know what I mean? Like the Lord can't uh, break through my work. Or even more so, like my heart just can't be lifted up to like what he desires to say to me in that moment. And I'd be naive to think that he doesn't want to speak to me in that moment. He doesn't want to talk to me in that moment. He he does. And maybe he's shouting, like, just turn off the stupid lo-fi <laughs> so I could talk to you. And um, and it's just tough, though, at the same time, we're in the sense of like, uh, I don't like the quiet. And like, what is that? It's a question for myself, which anyway, I think maybe some listeners identify with like, like, what is that? And maybe just like, once again, in the silence though, there will be things that are, that are kind of brought up, but like praise, praise God, because once again, he desires to speak into that, but even more so he desires to meet us where we're at. And so 
But just to confirm, like that's that's a good practical step. And even to just um like maybe even sometimes recognizing like those those movements of the heart where like, God, I wish I could pray now. Or um, you know, like sometimes people have to try to fit in um mass in during their lunch break or like gosh, I wish I wish it wasn't like that. Well, okay, like take that movement of heart and just like talk to the Lord about that in that moment, you know, and just kind of like take a pause at your desk and, and just say, Hey Jesus, I love you right now, or whatever it is, like, but just mm-hmm. like from your heart speak to him because like he's attentive to you and he wants to to speak to you in the midst of what you're doing. And so but I do think a, an important first step is just to kind of carve out the space of silence where he's able to speak um, just loudly to you in that space. I remember Father Luigi Gisani tells a story of, I think being, I forget whether with, with a religious community or a group of priests, but it, they were having a, a beautiful evening and they were eating and they were enjoying time together. And at the end, he writes about this grieving that he experienced because throughout the, those couple hours, they they didn't say his name meaning the name of Jesus, right? Mm. And so he he's reflecting this this grief because it's just like how often we can just get caught up. And um, again, a group of priests are really just together doing life-giving things and sharing and laughing and having a real like, most likely spiritual conversation even or, or, or things that, that were, were life-giving. But like saying his name and acknowledging his presence. I think that's what we mean when we say acknowledging his presence, saying the name of Jesus allowing our hearts to be with the one we love. Right. And, and so, and that's going to take, that's a habit. And, and that's kind of a, a bit of a, uh, like learning to do that, learning to, to walk down the stairs and invite him and in, learning to get, you know, we say a prayer when we, uh, get in the car, but like, is it an actual experience of turning to the beloved? And I think that's provocative in a way that we say prayers, but is my heart actually turned towards him? Do I actually say his name mm-hmm. and I'll let that have an effect on me, you know? And so, yeah, I, I love it. And I, the podcast world, it's almost like we, we you know, we're, we're flying like a, a shot over the bow of the podcast world is, is kind of bold. And I'm glad you went there, bro. Because like, again, like I think er, er, early on, like the idea of C, the CFR starting a podcast is the idea of like, okay, we're just going to be more, we're going to contribute to more noise. We're going to contribute to, okay, here's another thing out there that people can use not to necessarily make space for the Lord, you know? And, but, it, I think even our listeners, like, what are you listening to? What are you watching? What do you, how, how much time are you taking to do that? You know, and, and that, that question goes for all of us as well. Mm-hmm. You know, we all have offices in a way, you know, and it's like, what's going on there? Um, I think that probably will poke people and that's okay. Because I think we could, all across the board, we could just probably all do less. We can all listen to less. We can all talk, you know, um, watch less so that we can be moved to say his name. Mm-hmm. And, and move to experience the one the, who waits for us in the silence, who waits for us um, when we start turning things off and making more space for him. To kind of, I, I think this is, this is actually what we believe, and I'll kind of use an anecdote to say it. Like, I do, I do actually believe, right? So we, we do this, and um, the hope is that, right, it is a source of encouragement to people in some formation that they then, that takes them deeper in their interior lives. And they're spiritualized, right? Uh, the hope for this is not that it is a um, kind of a like a, a spiritual distraction, mm-hmm. right? Or a spiritualized kind of like justified distraction in that sense. And I do think, and, and I like, I'm not trying. I don't want to. I want to be very careful about like not like alienating the audience. I do think for many people, they listen to it, and and they listen to it like for ongoing formation and they receive it and they take it and they put it into practice in their lives in a really beautiful and profound way. And the feedback and the encouragement of that has been super, super clear. But also, right, if um, if after these episodes, after this episode, for example, and th- I, I really think we believe this, if, if we took a, a, you know, there was a 25 or 50% decrease in downloads because our, our listeners were sort of encouraged to take a step back from all podcasts, including this one, to really cultivate the interior life and a, um, a sort of a culture of solitude in their lives, Sweet. we would consider that like a win, <laughs> like, you know, and that would be something that'd be like, it wouldn't be something that we're sensitive about. It'd be like, okay, awesome. This is actually what we were hoping for, right? And I actually had a story of, I have a friend of mine who's been a friend for a very long time, very close. And um, she doesn't listen to, she doesn't listen to podcasts at all. And she doesn't listen to ours. And it, I had like a little conversation with her and she she referred to something that I thought was a reference to the podcast. And at first it like, it kind of like, it like made me sad. I'm like, oh no, like, 
has something happened in her life that now she has to kind of like start to fill it with, <laughs> with these other things. And I, I like, it's like, oh, are you listening to podcast? podcast? No, she's like, oh, no, 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 sorry, I'm still not doing that. It was, no, you just mentioned this, this other place. And it's like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> because she's already like at this point in her life where, um, like she's just not listening to things and she has kids and when she's with her, or she has a daughter when she's with her daughter and stuff like that, she's just entering into the quiet, into the solitude. And I think that there's something really, really beautiful with that. And, um, and so just again, like uh, hopefully the, 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 the tone and the, the sense of this is, is coming across uh, the way we desire to communicate it is like we do this and we do this for a reason and we believe and we hope that it's helpful for people and we're really, really blessed to be with people on the journey. If the Lord, if part of the Lord's inviting you to go deeper with him and space with him is to remove like, like podcasts out of your life, including ours, like, hey, let's go, let's, let's go deeper. And this might be a good thing and there might be a better thing in the quiet. And, and, and if that, if, if you gave us a testimony of that, like, hey, we, this, your podcast really helped me for a couple of years. And then, you know, you did that episode and that, that series and I stepped away and now it's like six months later, here's what's going on in my <clears throat> prayer life. That would be an incredible, incredible, um, like source of encouragement for us. And I think, I think that's, that we're on the same page with that. I for think, sure. Right? Oh, yeah, for sure. I, uh, we're having this interesting uh, experience at St. Joseph's Friary now, uh, and per- particularly the next couple of months because of the moves of Father Mark Mary, you mentioned you're going to St. Leopold's and, and we're actually losing, uh, Brother Mariano's moving on and then we're getting some younger brothers, but we actually don't have like more finally professed people like brothers coming. So at our Friary, we, we have like the same amount of responsibility or more with less time and less people, right? So we're feeling our own limitations and we've just had this, with the brothers, myself, particularly Father Angelos, myself, Brother Angelo, Brother Colby, I think we are having conversations w- <clears throat> using the the word a lot, discerning, like discernment. We're going to th- like we're gonna we're gonna put everything in our lives on the table to be like, okay, we are going to discern this next season of life what God is doing and what he, what He wants us to spend our time on, right? Because if we you have more responsibility with less time and less people, something's got to give. Right, and so I think that word I'm st- I'm struck by it. It's like, are are we willing to discern, which means to listen to the voice of Jesus, to ask the good questions, Jesus? What are you doing in this next season of our lives? How do you want us to go deeper? And I would say, how do you want us to grow in our relationship with you? How do you want us to grow in intimacy with you and intimacy with the brothers? And <laughs> and it's a it's just a personal example of what's going on here. But I think for everybody, are we willing to discern with the Lord, like our lives, like what's what do I fill my time with? What do I f- what do I fill the space with? Like the noise, right? What's the technology used? Are we willing to discern time? Okay, so we we know a lot of friends like, man, my kids play way too much sports and that's going to be on the table. How much time our kids play like uh spend playing sports? Because it just it kind of wrecks the weekends, it wrecks the fa- <laughs> like family time. If you're not getting the family time because kids are playing sports, can that be on the table? Like, are we really willing to look at this and say, this is actually not healthy for our life, right? So it's similar in the spiritual life. Can we give God permission? Can everything be on the table from what I do when I wake up in the morning to when I go to bed at night? What, like, are we going to, will we give God free reign about our life and the way we spend our time and our energy and our relationships? Um, I just think it's healthy because then we can say, okay, like, if I'm not willing to, 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 to let go and hold things lightly in my life, how do you make more time for solitude? Right? Like, how do you, how do you grow in this to lean in? Cause I think every one of us needs to lean in it's, I don't think we ever plateau and it's dangerous to be like, well, I just do this and that's all I'm willing to give. Well, I don't, I don't know how you grow then or go deeper. So I think the invitation to discern our lives and be like, okay, God, I give you everything. I give you permission and I'm not going to be afraid. Cause sometimes in my own experience, I'm like, Ooh, but I like that. Like, I want to do that. And one of the brother, brother Andrew was like, yeah, but everything's on the table. <laughs> like, okay, man, like, yeah, you know, and God's going to be faithful and give these things back to you, but let's just go all in and let the Lord kind of sift through our life so we can be like, live in deeper salt. And just say, like you said, discernment in Latin, discernment means actually to sift. And so it's like this, this like sifting of our lives that ultimately needs to happen for the sake of, of this, our beloved, that, that needs to happen for the sake of our own maturity and growth and flourishing in what God wants us to do though. And so that can be scary though, because when God continues to sift, we're only left with what's actually most important, but that could see 
my my preferences, my opinions, my favorite TV show, my favorite podcast, what I do in my free time, my favorite whatever. That could see all that. If everything's on the table legitimately, and I love that because it's like, could you see a family and the boldness like this is this season of our life? It's like garage sale time, baby. Let's go. And like we're gonna put it all out there and we're gonna see, okay, this is what we do with our time. This is what we watch. This is what we listen to. This is what we do during the kids' nap time. This is what we this is what I listen to on the way to work. This is what we do on our weekend. Just it's all out there. And most of it's probably gonna be good. That's the hard part too. Right, because discerning means even be discerning between goods. But what's the greater good when I desire to grow with the Lord in deeper intimacy and prayer? What's the greater good? That's just it's an honest question that we're just gonna have to be able to face. But to let our lives and our hearts and our time and everything be sifted to what can remain, which is the most important thing, which is experiencing this deep intimacy with God. And letting that be fruitful in our lives. But I think a lot of us are afraid. And I'll just speak for me. Just a, when I revolted inside when you were like, everything's on the table. Like, no, like I, you know, like there's this experience, like, no, but I, but, but this thing and that thing, and this, this, this thing does a lot of good. And, and it's like, no, everything's out there. So we can actually then ask, and we can actually not be independent. Right. And we can lean into what God wants to do. Nothing. One of the things on the table I heard is that we're going to bring a sand pit into the friary you just got to discern into the vocation well. office you got to discern that big it's going to save some time instead in other areas of, yeah. it's it's, instead of like wood floors is a sand floors right yeah. yeah and you don't have to worry about sweeping <clears throat> and mopping exactly seriously barefoot all over the place oh, and it just gets everywhere that's awful <laughs> yeah but it's going to be everywhere i think my purgatory i'm going to be buried in sand and watch the sins of my life before me yeah <laughs> seriously anyway mm -hmm. so this is just a, a final kind of um take on it i think um so this is what St. Teresa says, page 122. Who wishes to enter the second mansions will be well advised as far as his state of life permits to try and put aside all unnecessary affairs and businesses. Pretty serious, right? But again, it's all in, on the table. Whatever's not, we want to try and put aside all that's not, uh, all unnecessary affairs and businesses, which implies, right, there are certain things which are necessary. Um, one of the, the parables that is used um, through the book is this is the the sower he sows right and there's some things that fall on good soil and bad soil and some gets like <laughs> choked and it ultimately gets kind of choked and killed by concerns of the world and so that's part of why we're trying to like not only are we trying to make sure we're not being choked by these con concerns and anxieties of the world but even even with the good things choosing the best and, and really really creating space for for the lord to speak um i think we'll go ahead and land the plane on the episode but i will encourage the readers so this is i think i want to talk about it but i think we'll land it it's a little bit of a it's related but um but i think we've kind of said enough here is there page 124 which is the section on salt too i was hoping you would say this and didn't, oh, i don't man. want you to leave this out yeah. no no please it's good i was excited about it, it. is good oh, yeah. totally. okay well, i was ready to fire your translation off. of it is great okay well so this is then we're going to talk about it for a second um <laughs> So basically, St. John, John of the Cross has this, this note to his, um, his brothers, which basically, page 124 is the quote. I'm not going to read it. Is that okay? That's fine not to read the quote. But, the, but basically, it's just mind your own business is what he's saying. And, <laughs> and it's like one of the ways in which our lives can be, um, and, the, and what God is doing within us can be sort of suffocated and choked is by this over-concern or over-anxiety about what is happening in other people's lives and what they're doing and giving our time and our attention and our hearts over to these things that this ultimately is not a practice of solitude and this is something that actually um uh they use the word that that one of the words is used that suffocates this is something that can that's can smother what god is doing within us and um Love that. do you have you i have a couple of quotes your mark do you want to read one father pt so i don't steal yours uh i don't think you can but anyway it's just something similar I think it's Dubé. <clears throat> if our mind is free enough to notice what others are doing, is free enough to carry out what scripture repeatedly tells us, namely to keep our eyes always on the Lord, to sing to him in our hearts always and everywhere. Love it. Yep. Mind your business. If you got enough time to think about what other, other people are doing, don't. You got enough free time to talk to the Lord. And that's, <laughs> so, yeah, that's the line here. People yeah. who are minding others, <clears throat> others' affairs are not minding their own. Um, let's see another one. This is the saint considers distress over the sins and failings of others in everyday life as a demonic temptation. Ooh, you got to read more about that to figure out how to, how to nuance that in your life. Finger. Page 124, fire within, coupon code. 
Poco a poco. That's not real. But uh, it is a good book. Uh, St. Teresa's conclusion is that the safe path for the soul that practices prayer will be not to bother about anything or anyone and pay attention to itself and to pleasing God. So basically, yeah, just mind, mind your business. Yeah, but, but you can mind your business with other people. But it's also like, it's the same experience when like, oh, I want to watch the news because I want to read about this guy. This guy might be in my presence or it might be something like totally. in, in the news. Totally, 100%. Like, so yeah, I know, no, we know that, right. but I'm just struck by that. Right. Like, if I have enough time to think about this bishop and what he's doing wrong, and then I then I complain that like, oh, I, I don't know how to, I can't pray. Well, because you're spending, we're spending all our time preoccupied with other people, mm -hmm. right? And it just has an effect. And mm -hmm. it's personal because I, I wasted a lot of time. There's not a lot of curiosity in the second mansion. Yeah, right. Mm. It's a good point. Like, uh, yes. maybe there, I mean, but how, I don't know how to say it. It's, there's not a lot of. But something happens. Healthy. There's, there's, I think there's a healthy order curiosity. Lord, what are you doing? No, but um, yeah, but I do think that's 100% part of it. It's just, there's a whole tradition of like idle talk and all sort of stuff. And part of what it's talking about is just. And a sense of worldliness. And yeah, when yeah. we turn on the news, I'm again, I'm not, I, th I think there's a healthy way to do it. But when you turn on the news and you allow the distracting to pull you in. I don't know yeah. if there's a healthy way to do it these days. Maybe in the, <laughs> maybe 30 years ago, but I'm not quite sure there's a healthy way to get pulled into the 24 hour news cycle without being distracted. I don't know. I'm just saying it has an effect on my prayer. I'll say that for me personally. It has an effect on my prayer. I still check. Just I'm going to put this on the table. I, I check everything's major, on the major sports uh, <laughs> headlines. I think that's something. I think, but I think there's. I think this is kind of what she's talking about. You're minding that business and you're not minding other business. <laughs> you got enough time to listen to <clears throat> hours of ESPN radio, but you don't got enough time to sit before the Lord. That's me. That's <laughs> not you, me. <laughs> it's almost like the, the image from the scriptures where you got your little like garden or you got your little uh, vineyard and just put the hedge around it and just, mm -hmm. just do your thing. Garden and do what you do. I always ask the Lord to make my the, the hedges tall so I can't see over to my neighbor and see what he's doing. Just like... Just my stay little corner of the vineyard. Stay focused, Dan. Doing my thing. Mm -hmm. But I love looking at other people's vineyards too. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> judging them. Hey, look at yours. <laughs> yeah. Look at that guy's stupid vineyard <laughs> over there. <laughs> and in the silly way he wears his rosary Sink on his <laughs> cincture. All right. I think that was good. Yeah. I think that's going to be, that's going to be, a, that's a, that's like a, there's some zingers in there coming out, mm. coming yeah. About us as well, though. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. But mind your business, all right. <laughs> Speaking of this, I, I I feel like I didn't contribute to the earlier conversation. I like cooking. Everybody knows that. But you know what I like when I cook is what the beer bread. Not the beer bread. What do I, what's my favorite thing to do? I'll do with any meat we make. Sauces. Sauces like gravies and sauces. I love it. It's great. a lot. I absolutely love it. Like it's a different. I've never made the same sauce. It's kind of fun, right? That's great. That's right. a good anyway, one. Anyway, I, I felt like I'm like not fun. I don't have anything fun about me. That's why I'm in the fourth chair. I'm just not fun at all. <laughs> no, one chair. You we are all, fun. We all share one chair. I'm uh, accused of not being fun and uh, what's, what is the other thing? I'm, I don't know. Like you just don't, yeah, I'm not funny. I love fun a wide open grass field where guys can play sports. That's open. Mm -hmm. It's available. That was something cherished for my youth. The smell of a basketball court. What about the smell of cut, fresh cut grass? Not, I don't care that much. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I mean, because it brings back baseball and it's just like, <laughs> man. And so, if, if any of you, you know, I commented on gambling, please uh, <laughs> obey all natural and divine laws. Let's not, and yeah, if you have a gambling, what do they say on the end of those gambling commercials? And if you have a gambling problem, please call. Yeah. <laughs> if in Kentucky, please call this. <laughs> New York calls us. Yeah, I have not gambled anything monetary in 15 years, at least. <laughs> Um, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. And we're done. Mm -hmm. Can you pray? I would love to. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you and praise you and thank you. Just thank you for just the call and grace to, to live in intimacy with you. And Father, we just ask for more for, for us and for all who are listening that you would continue just to draw our hearts and affections, our time, our energy to yourself, and that we would experience at this very moment um, just a, a strength and a power um, that is from you, that we could leave everything behind um, to take a step closer to you. And with great trust and confidence, we believe that you will give us everything that we desire. We ask this all through Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 
Amen. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, too. We got a couple. It's a little bit hard to write. Or Teresa. Teresa asks. She wrote us a very nice Father's Day card. It's from back in the day. And Thank some you, and a little good shepherd thing going. Nice. Little sheepies. There's four little sheepies. Oh. We're the four little sheepies. What else? We got a wedding invitation. Adam and Marcy. We for, out? With their listeners. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Road trip. I'm going to be in New Hampshire in a couple of weeks. I think that area. Well, do you want me to ask them to change the wedding? <laughs> it's in October. It's no, October 7th. Maybe it's they October can drop 7th. by some food or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Adam and Marcy, congratulations. And we'll see you next week. Peace, y'all. Peace, y'all. Bye, everybody. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love, that life is short, that all will be well.